So now that the reroll wounds part of the oath of moment has gone the way of the dodo, is it time for the plus one to wound of the storm speed of Thunderstrike to step up against enemy monsters and vehicles? Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Space Marines once more, and in this video I thought we'd focus on the Storm Speed of Thunderstrike and talk about why it seems to be popping up in a few more army lists than it was before the Codex came out. In the video we'll talk briefly about the models, then the Thunderstrike's data sheets, also covering the other Storm Speeders as we go, and then just talk briefly about a few other buffs and synergies for the unit and how I might think about using it in game. The Primaris Storm Speeders came out during the early part of 9th edition, basically Games Workshop's update on the Land Speeder model, which has now been sadly phased out. These things are a bit bigger, chunkier, and affectionately have been known as flying bricks to many. Though you could probably say much of the same about many of the rest of the Space Marine vehicles out there. On the battlefield, they're employed in Space Marine's favourite lightning strikes, fast moving firepower that hits very, very hard relative to the vehicle's weight class. And there's three typical variants employed by the Space Marines the Hail Strike to scythe down enemy infantry formations, and the Hammer Strike and Thunder Strike to go after tanks and heavier hitters. I'd say out of the Primaris range, it might have been one of the miniatures that people weren't wholly as excited about as some of the rest. Maybe it's partly the slightly weird feel of it, in that it's really quite a big and chunky vehicle, but it's also supposed to be a really quite fast moving and light unit. Often they generally just tend to do better if they're really quite cheap in points units, like land speeders or attack bikes were as part of their value as being expendable. It meant that they were kind of limited play during 9th edition, I think, and probably the fairly hefty price tag of £45 or $75 US dollars didn't really help with that. I would say that it feels like they just charge quite a lot for what it is, being a vehicle that feels just a little bit lighter than some Space Marine tanks out there. In 10th edition, though, there's been a bit more of a draw to them with their unit special rules. Games Workshop seems to have decided that these guys are going to help out the rest of the army with firepower buffs, contributing a little bit of shooting themselves, but mainly marking a target to help out the rest of their gun line. If you were looking to pick one up, then they're £39 from Element Games in the UK, or 92 Australian dollars from Gap Games down under. They're linked in the video description, and any purchases made through the discount retailers down there does go to help support all Spets tactics. Getting into the rules for the Storm Speeders though, and I thought we might start with the exciting one, at least in my opinion, and that one's the Storm Speeder Thunderstrike. It's 160 points for this guy, the Hail Strike is 130, and the Hammer Strike is 150, and they all share the same similar stat line, a movement of 14 inches, so really quite rapid there. Hopefully should be able to get the first strike on the enemy rather than the other way around. And a kind of mediocre defensive profile, toughness 9, 11 wounds and a 3 plus save really isn't all that good for 160 points, Compared with most other vehicles out there, it's definitely on the more fragile side. You're not going to be bringing it down with small arms though, but it's perhaps unusually susceptible to things like melter weapons. Otherwise, it's got objective control 3, so a little bit of objective presence if desperately needed, and also has the deep strike special rule as well. To my mind though, usually that's going to be a little bit on the pointless side. These things move really quite quickly, and the Thunderstrike at least has fairly long range, so I feel like the vast majority of the time you're probably going to want to start it on the board. For its damage output, the Thunderstrike has the unusual feature of hitting on a 2 plus for Space Marines. It does mean that it's more resilient to modifiers than most, though perhaps means that it doesn't gain quite so much from Oath of Moments compared with the units that hit on a 3. For its weapons, it gets 3 different guns, 1 set of Storm Fury missiles, 1 Thunderstrike Last Talon, and 1 Twin Icarus Rocket Pod. And it's quite nice that the two more exciting guns have a range out to 36 inches, so you could definitely hang back and stay safe early in the game, and then move up to 24 inches later on perhaps. The Storm Fury missiles are basically the same profile as a last cannon at strength 12 and damage d6 plus 1. The Thunderstrike last talon is strength 9, AP3 and damage d6 plus 1, so a little bit less good against high toughness vehicles there. And the Twin Icarus rocket pod is d3 attacks at strength 8 and damage 2, with 4 rerolls to wound from twin links, and anti-fly 2 plus for good measure if you happen to hit anything that can fly. Between that little cluster of profiles, I think it's generally going to be best at things that are around about toughness 4 to toughness 8, and have medium sort of armour saves. You kill around about 2 or 3 standard sized space marines, around 1 dead terminator, or about 6 wounds to a toughness 9 vehicle with a 3 plus save, like say an enemy storm speeder, all generally quite effective there. Struggles a bit more against things like land raiders though, doing around 3 or 4 wounds to them. For 160 points though, I wouldn't say it's enormously exciting for damage output, Definitely one of the biggest reasons to run them is its special rule. Speaking of which, the things that seem to be getting at least some people to play Storm Speeders is the big plus one to wound that they can get from its special rule. 
The Thunderstripe rule means that after your unit is shot, you get to nominate one target hit by one of its attacks, and if it's a monster or vehicle, then the rest of your army will get a plus one to wound against that for the rest of the shooting phase. It basically gives you some really quite brutal damage against one big scary enemy threat. Plus one to wound on some of the rest of your heaviest guns in the army is really quite a big deal. Though it is a rule that's going to be just far more relevant against some armies than others, as obviously it's kind of wasted if your enemy doesn't have any vehicles or no vehicles that really require the plus one to wound to take down. For that reason, it's probably not worth over-investing in these things. But if your opponent does have a target worthy of its attention, then getting a plus one to wound is really quite enormous on it. Typically, that's going to be somewhere between a 25% to plus 50% damage increase on that target. And that is a boost that can stack with the Oath of Moment buff as well. You could make one target just incredibly easy to kill and gain a bunch of value of Oath of Moment back that you might have lost from no longer re-rolling wound rolls. I certainly rate the Thunderstrike as the best of the variants right now, but perhaps realistically the Hammer Strike isn't all that far behind. It gets the same basic profile, but more shots hitting on a 3 plus. It's 150 points but a lot of its firepower is just locked to 18 inch range. You'd have to get up close and personal to use that Melter Destroyer, basically a multi-melter on three shots, and then it gets a bunch of strength 9 damage D6 missiles on top of that, and two crack storm grenade launcher shots. Its buff is that instead of getting the plus one to wound against monsters and vehicles, it strips cover from the unit that it just targeted. That's really not a too bad debuff, though it is maybe a little bit not quite as exciting for 150 points. Maybe just a bit more dependent on the target and exactly what's firing at it. Sometimes it is going to be pretty big, sometimes it's just not going to matter that much. Comparing the damage output, these are the numbers for the Thunderstrike and the Hammer Strike at 18 inch range, and it's weighted to 160 points, so giving the Hammer Strike slightly more damage than one model would get. Despite both having some fairly different mixes of weapons, it is kind of striking at just how similar the damage output of these guys is. The Hammer Strike very, very slightly wins out against Intercessors, Terminators, and the Rhino, and is about the same as the Land Raider despite the weighting. But the differences here are just really, really small. I feel like you're not really going to notice that in game very much. Though the Hammer Strike would pull a bit more significantly ahead if you managed to get it within 9 inch melter range, and at least that melter destroyer got the plus 2 damage. However though, despite the similar numbers, I feel like the damage difference just isn't anywhere near enough to compensate for the long range that the Thunder Strike has. It would be able to get these same numbers to 24 inches, and not really lose all that much all the way out to 36 either. Between that and the plus 1 to wound special rule, I feel like it basically has the Hammer Strike beaten at the moment, though realistically I wouldn't say it's all that far behind. Otherwise, for the Hail Strike, I do feel like Games Workshop didn't do this any favours in the Codex update. It's got basically the same profile, but trades out the fairly threatening weapons for a whole bunch of strength 4 or 5 with AP 0 and damage 1, just meaning that it's never really going to be all that good against anything besides light infantry. You get around 23 shots on average between the Frag Storms, the Gatling Cannon, and the Heavy Stubbers, if you can get it within 18 inch range. That equates to around about 8 dead Termagants, around about 3 wounds to Primaris Intercessors, or about 1 or 2 wounds to Terminators. Basically, it's just not very exciting against anything against Hordes, and even against them, I feel like killing 8 of them isn't super outstanding for 130 points. Previously, though, despite that, I still thought it was an interesting choice just for its special rule. As for this one, you get to nominate one target that you hit, and then any further attacks get an extra pip of AP against that target, which was really quite big, and pretty much flatly superior to the Hammer Strike rule. In the Codex, though, Games Workshop changed it so it no longer affects monsters and vehicles, which is kind of a shame as they're exactly the sort of targets that you need that AP buff against. It kind of turned it from a very powerful general purpose buffing unit that just happened to have anti-infantry damage into something that's only really useful if you're fighting a lot of enemy infantry or light troops. In some games, I guess, when your opponent's building around a massive Terminator Death Star or something, then it still will be very worth it. But I feel like for 130 points, the numbers aren't just lining up for it at the moment. Switching back to the Thunderstrike once more again though, I thought it could just be kind of interesting to run some numbers on what sort of damage output buff it gives. And here's just one comparison of the damage of three Ballistas Dreadnoughts versus two Ballistas Dreadnoughts under Thunderstrike, both versus a Toughness 10 vehicle and a Land Raider. Overall it looks like three Ballistas Dreadnoughts do around about 18 wounds to a Toughness 10 vehicle, or around 11 wounds to a Land Raider, whereas a Thunderstrike and two Dreadnoughts do 21 wounds to the Toughness 10 vehicle, or about 13 wounds to the Land Raider. Overall, I think it's a small but noticeable improvement, and it does show that it can make some focus fire more efficient, even if it's just buffing two units. But it could be particularly nice if it was shooting against something particularly massive, maybe a great big super heavy Titanic Knight or something. 
or he had yet more units trying to focus down one target, which he might still have to do if it was something that had nice durability boosts, say the Land Raider or the Toughness 10 vehicle had cover, or even if you were just firing at something like an Imperial Knight Armager or a War Dog with a 4 plus invulnerable save due to rotating those shields. It would be even more meaningful than this if it was buffing things that were wounding their targets on a 5 plus, maybe things like Hell Blasters or Eradicators perhaps. Having them go from wounding on a 5 to wounding on a 4 is a massive deal. For the Codex Detachments, it maybe feels like the natural home of this guy might well be the Iron Storm Spearhead, though I feel like it could work with just about any Space Marine anti-tank type units. The Iron Storm Spearhead is definitely quite handy for the single dice reroll. That could help out the Storm Fury missiles in particular. And I feel like you're just likely to be including quite a lot of units in the Iron Storm that could really benefit from the plus one to wound, whether it's Redemptor Dreadnoughts with Macro Plasmas or Ballistuses. Having access to plenty of good vehicle support stratagems are quite nice as well. And it could be particularly brutal if you're handing out a plus one to wound before a unit uses the sustained hit stratagem. Maybe damage an enemy vehicle with the thunder strike and then move on to the next unit that uses the sustained hits. Then you've basically got a vehicle that's operating on an extra 50% firepower due to the stratagem and then might be getting an extra 25 to 50% worth of firepower on top of that from the thunder strikes buff. Otherwise I feel like it's usable enough provided you've got at least some firepower elsewhere in your list. The Vanguard Spearhead feels like it could be an okay fit as well, given that you've got the cover and the minus one to hit at longer range, where this guy's going to likely want to be operating. Could be quite a nice boost to combine with things that want to use the stratagem for the extra plus one to hit and extra AP. Maybe things like Hellblasters or Eradicators with a plus one to hit, then a plus one to wound as well. Otherwise, for the Anvil Siege Force, it might be competing with the plus one to wound that they can get as static. Kind of nice for things that weren't heavy weapons though, so again, could be plus one to hit and wound a vehicle. The First Company Task Force could maybe stack with the reroll wounds target, I guess. Could make things like Hellblasters wound a big knight or something on a four plus rerolling. The Gladius gives access to easy advance and shoot, and you can maybe buff perhaps the aggressor fire discipline combo if it made sense. Lots of AP minus to aggressor shots going in at a 5 plus to wound a vehicle, then re rolling all those wound rolls would be nice. The Firestorm Assault Force can get some extra shooting and some extra strength up close. That one feels like it could be quite nice for the Hammer Strike, actually, particularly if Vulcan Hestan is about. And finally, the Stormlands Task Force, that can bring a nice minus one to hit and wound stratagem, which is quite good if you're going to include one of these in the force, as it's kind of fragile. I feel like there's not quite as much to go with the Divergent chapters for these guys, other than what's already been said. Maybe the Black Templars could be quite nice to help out their multi-melter tanks, the Death Watch could help it out with various damage buffs from their detachment, and Dark Angels do have some okay shooting stratagems. Feels like it's kind of a unit that's just going to do what it's going to do, regardless of too much chapter-specific stuff though. The Storm Speeders do seem to be making their way into competitive lists, they featured in a couple of the Space Marine lists that I talked about earlier in the week. There's one here in this Iron Storm Spearhead list by TJ Spaeth, who used it to take down the three Taverns GT. Six victories in a row here, so it shows they definitely have some legs in a competitive list. Quite a nice extra damage boost to go alongside that Tet Marine's target augury web for the lethal hits. There's really quite a lot of scary armour to get a plus one to wound on vehicles with here. This list by Ruben Zhao, who came third at the SoCal Open and again was undefeated going 6-0, also used one as well. This one's a Gladius list and there's quite a few interesting units that could again use the buff. Would be quite nice with the Eradicators to allow them to wound on a 4 plus against a key tank. Or could feed into the Aggressors with the Bolt Storm Gauntlets for the Firestorm combo. A whole bunch of lethal hits from that and a whole bunch of regular hits that gets a wound on a 5 plus re-rolling, likely it's AP2. Certainly wouldn't hurt on other things though, could help out the Land Raider and Repulsor Executioner deal with armour even more efficiently as well. Overall it does seem that the Storm Speeder Thunderstrike is competitive enough to make it into some top tier armies. I feel like if you've got most Space Marine lists that have at least a fairly heavy amount of shooting then they're pretty usable. Though I'd probably only go for the one in the full gun line list as otherwise I feel like you're maybe just skewing a bit too much into things that don't do all that much damage unless you've got vehicles and monsters on the field. Seems particularly nice for allowing mid-strength firepower to punch up. Things like Hell Blasters, Redemptor Plasma Incinerators, Ballistas Missiles, and plenty of other stuff besides. In-game, as mentioned, I'd probably start this guy on the board rather than deep striking. Aim to hover somewhere behind cover and then use its good movement to get some line of sight on things. Possibly staying back to 36 inches if it's going to help keep it safe and just plug away with its anti-tank weapons. The main aim being to mark one enemy vehicle or monster for destruction each turn and then focus fire on it with enough of your guns to make that buff worth it. 
then towards the end of the game when just destroying units might not be as important, perhaps using the very good movement to move towards the enemy and take some central objectives and things, and force the opponent to have to try and deal with it and try and kill it before the game comes to a close. In games without vehicles, I guess you could switch up the way that you play it a bit, as it would be kind of low priority in those sort of games, I guess you could use it a bit more aggressively, and maybe if you had one vehicle that you had to take more firepower on, this one might be a better choice than other things that are useful in the matchup. Overall, seems like it's pretty usable in certain army lists at the moment at least. Let me know your experience with them, if you've had any on the battlefield yourself so far. Has it managed to survive for long enough to make that plus one to wound meaningful? If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well and you can find that linked in the video description below if you'd like to help support and keep these coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.